Hi guys, Dustin here with another Eagle Moss Collections video. This is the Star Trek, the official Starships collection. We are taking a look at the Romulan Bird of Prey in the 22nd century. Launched in the 22nd century with a length of 130 meters. Disruptors are the only weapons. Created by the Romulan Star Empire. Destructed in the 22nd century, length of 130 meters. Cloaking devices, defense, and weaponry or disruptor cannons. Alright, let's take a look. The Romulan Bird of Prey. Whoops. Whoops, whoops. Straps have gone funny. <laughs> the Romulan Bird of Prey was a tactical advanced ship. Used to aggressively protect the race's borders. The Bird of Prey of the 22nd century was warp capable starship equipped with disruptor banks and advanced cloaking technology. Its name was derived from its distinctive appearance as close resemblance to a giant predatorial bird. They have an aggressive appearance or were so named due to their distinctive avian like appearances, which is basically based off of. Actually began as the avian style of these ships were probably influenced by Romulan's origins. They began as a revolutionary group of Vulcans who refused to accept the Vulcan and philosopher Sirach's teachings the complete suppression of emotions. And they became known as those who march beneath the raptor's wings. I heard Raptor or bird of prey thus became an iconic symbol and was a recurring motive in the Romulan design. At 130 meters, composed of a single shaped hull, like a elongated saucer of sweat, warp cells on either side, the ship was colored in dark green, and warp cells gave off an intense green glow. The command center appeared to be located in the middle of the dorsal side, the saucer in a raised fin that ran, ran behind it all the way to the rear of the ship. The Bird of Prey, the Romulan fleet, in the addition to the Bird of Prey, the Romulan fleet of the 22nd century known to include the larger Romulan Warbird and Romulan drone ships. The Romulan Bird of Prey encountered in 2152 was equipped with advanced cloaking technology that rendered it completely invisible to the Enterprise's NX-01 sensors. Even when the Bird of Prey was not cloaked, it reflected in the Enterprise sensors so no information was recorded about its interior or capability. pictures, some overviews. When it hits a mine, when the Enterprise hit a mine, created a thermokinetic explosion that caused a breach in the ship's hull. Disruptor fire from the bird of prey took form of a light green bolt of light. And just like that, a few direct hits would have destroyed the Enterprise. Well, it would have been enough to destroy the Enterprise. As Lieutenant Reed tried to disarm my spike shot out and went straight through his leg. Ouch. Captain Archer attempted free before the Romulans returned. That hurts. Ouch. That's gotta hurt. The Enterprise was monitored closely by bird of prey that made its way carefully out of the vast minefield and surround to the planet. The Enterprise managed to rescue Archer and Reed and jumped to warp seconds before two bird of prey swooped in for the kill. In addition, the fleet in the 22nd century also consists of powerful drone ships that can be remotely piloted from their home world. The Enterprise NX-01 was equipped with a quantum beacon so they were mounted on the ship's grabber arm. This sensor technology was provided by Daniels, a temporary temporal agent from the 31st century to unmask cloaked Silva and stealth cruisers. By shifting their phase 
variants of the Gamma Spectrum, they also revealed the cloaked human minds. They were, however, unable to penetrate the more sophisticated cloaks used by the Romulan bird of prey. Here's the profile. You have the deflector grid. It's all over here. Support wings, and warp nacelles. You also have the stabilizer fin, which is actually basically the same way as a airplane would have in today's standards. The impulse engines are back here. The observation windows. The emitter and the main bridge are up here. It's possible that the Romulan bird of praise were equipped with much more powerful weaponry than we had in their collections. By the 23rd century, they were also carrying massively powerful plasma torpedoes that were capable of obliterating outposts buried a mile deep on solid iron asteroids. They were first known for an independent develop cloaking device to de develop cloaking devices. The Enterprise had previously encountered Sullivan ships that used cloaking devices. Their technology had been given to them by a mysterious benefactor from the 29th century. It took a long time for the Romulans to develop this stealth technology. It was not perfect even a century after it was used. In 2266, the USS Enterprise was able to pick up a blip on its tracking sense to detect a cloaked Romulan bird of prey. The blip only appeared when the bird of prey moved. It was enough to locate the vessel, and that was it. So, designing the bird, Romulan bird of prey, the... the Romulan Bird of Prey was adapted from the original series, Bird of Prey. It was the first new Romulan ship to feature in Star Trek Enterprise. Production illustrator John Eves was responsible for developing of this 22nd century ship as earlier Klingon vessels he had developed for the Enterprise. He was enormously excited to emphasize this new starship for one of Star Trek's classic alien races. Never appear on screen. Even though this never appeared on screen, this actually looks cool. The visual effect artist, Rob bon Bonchoon, created this version of the Bird of Prey with a bird design on the underside at first intended. A century later, during the original series, This is the Romulan Bird of Prey studio model that was designed, built by Wild Chang in just two weeks. It was delivered unpainted, but the Earth bird graphics was added later. The Bird of Prey, bird of Prey was constructed out of vacuum formed plastic, plaster, and metal parts. It featured an internal wiring light and measured approximately two and a half feet in width. This is John Eames' initial sketch for the 22nd century Bird of Prey featuring attachments of the outside of the warp cells. It's actually the colored version. The finish, this is the finished design feature pointed to cells actually gave it a much more of an aggressive look. Plenty of surface detail helped make the ship much more realistic when it's turned to a CG model. Alright. Eve's added actually a bird of prey graphic to the underside of the ship and the one was illustrates homage to the original design. But it didn't fit in with the overall design ethos has been established in Enterprise. The original Romulans, from their first appearance in the episode of Battles of Terror, it was based that the Romulans were actually based off of the Roman Empire. They're the oldest recurring villains, they're also one of the most mysterious. 
it's easy to forget that they appear in just two episodes of the original series. They first appeared in Ballast of Terror, which was Star Trek's ninth episode, and created by freelance writer Paul Schneider, who based their society of the ancient Roman Empire. This is a remastered version of the Enterprise incident as the bird prey was digitally inserted into this episode. The Klingons took over from the Romulans as their major villains because their makeup was much cheaper. The cost, basically for Custom pointed ears off of the Romulans was prohibitive, especially that it could be worn only once. They got around this problem making them wear helmets. Basically, that's when the Roman troops actually wear helmets as well. Their first appearance, they were portrayed as an honorable race, who were prepared to do anything for their duty for the glory of their empire, even if you have grave misgivings about his mission. Romulan commander was still prepared to carry out his orders and as far as to destroy his ship rather than be captured alive. Or again. So this is DC Fontana, pictured here in the 1960s. War wrote the second Star Trek episode featuring the Romulans. He actually tells her story would have been better serving a cloaking device that had been much smaller. Just as the Roman society where women held important positions, female Romulan commander was written to be a formidable opponent and every inch equal of Kirk. You see Fontana was against the romantic scenes, she thought it was out of context and the Romulan commander had not been so easily fooled by Spock. The origin, the uh, Romulans nearly did not make beyond the original series. They held a strong appeal for DC Montana and she advocated her return for the next generation. To me, the Romulans are actually a glamorous enemy. Now on the screen, this first appearance was Minefield and Enterprise. Exploring an uncharted system, the Enterprise and X-01 unwittingly stumbles into areas of space containing cloaked mines. One of them detonates and blasts a hole into the port forward quarter of the hull. If that were not bad enough, another malfunctioning, active mines attach themselves to a critical area of the ship's hull. Realizing that if it explodes, the Enterprise would be ripped to shreds. Lieutenant Reed was forced on an EV suit and attempt to disarm it from the outside. The fact that the bird of prey and minefield have cloaking technology apparently contradicts earlier Star Trek continuity. An explanation for this inconsistency is given in the non-canon novel The Good That Men Do. The, bird, the book explains that the birds of prey were prose high vessels had ultimately proven unsuccessful. In keeping the continuity established in Star Trek, the original series, Romulans and Minefield are only heard and not seen. Romulans are not seen by humans until Bounds of Terror, which was set in 2266. Parts of the Enterprise and Exxon 1 would be specifically built for Minefield, but were discarded afterward. They had to throw the pieces away, just they did not have any room for them. They're so large, well, why not put them in a museum? In the next issue, we're going to be taking a look at the Marquis Fighter. The in-depth profile on the Marquis Fighter, the Federation ship used by Marquis against Cardassians. The story behind design and introducing the Marquis to the Star Trek universe. Here is our little back graphic. So let's take a look at the model, and here it is in front of us. Just like the the warbird, I'm pretty amazed by 
Like they make it must make it accurate. No flaws or anything. And these are the warp cells. Make sure you have that menacing look. So it bridges right here. And the observation windows, you can barely see them. Bridge right here. They actually have the vertical fin right here. Kind of like what an airplane would have when it has a rudder. Basically, when an airplane has a rudder, basically turn to left, right, or left. That's why I like the small. And, uh, and this is actually a lighter green color than what we previously saw with a Romulan Warbird. So I actually like this ship better than the Romulan Warbird. They're both pretty accurate. They're both spot on. And they both look amazing. There's just no competition between those two. And actually, the texture is much amazing. The texture is much amazing. Anyway, I like this ship. If you like this video, subscribe. Well, if you leave, leave a like, feel free to subscribe to my channel for more Star Trek Starships videos. And hopefully there's going to be more in the future. When am I going to do NASCAR diecast videos? I have not decided yet. Anyway, my name is Dustin and I will see you later.